only seemed right to talk about Alan Shearer this week. Hall of Fame, never in doubt. Welcome back to Black and White Banter, everyone. Um, I thought I would jump on this week, and as he is the hot topic, and he deserves the full week, the whole year, the next decade, years and years to come, for us to keep talking about him, the one, the only, Alan Shearer. Yesterday, he was the first official member of the Premier League's Hall of Fame, alongside Thierry Henry, and let's face it, Newcastle fans, we're biased, but he's the best ever. You know, there's talk about Harry Kane maybe match him if he keeps playing in the Premier League. That might be that might happen. You know, records are there to be broken, but there is still nobody better at putting that ball in the back of the net, and he's one of our own. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to jump on and do a Liverpool match review, so to any of my fans, I know I don't have any fans, that may have been waiting for that. I'll be totally honest with you, I went out all day on Saturday to watch the match from lunchtime, got incredibly drunk with the pubs being open, woke up on Sunday incredibly rough, did not want to jump on a video with a hangover. That's pretty much it. I'm working on it. So, Alan Shearer, we've all got our own memories for him. I've got my own special memories. And I think, can I just say, and I mentioned it on my post on Facebook and Instagram, Anyone who's watching this, who's been lucky enough to watch the man live, as I have, just stop and think about how lucky you are. There's a lot of people say, oh, anyone who's seen Messi and Ronaldo play live, let's just enjoy them before they retire. It's Alan Shearer for me. I got to stand in the terraces, Shearer, Shearer, pointing at him, idolising him. He's the only person whose name I will have hanging from my wall as a grown man on a football shirt with no embarrassment at all. I don't actually have my Newcastle shirt with Shearer on to put on for this video. I've got it tucked away in my mum's house, in the drawer, under the bed, nice and safe and sound. I don't even wear it. I don't wear it because it is that special to me. So we've all got our special memories of him, whether it be banging in last-minute goals, penalties, derby goals, saving the team time and time after again, time and time again. But... I think the special thing with Alan Shearer, and this is what really frustrates me still to this day, is anyone who says that Shearer made a mistake, in my opinion, by joining Newcastle and not going to Manchester United, where he could have... Let's be honest, he could have won lots of trophies. If he'd have gone to, to, New, to Man United in 1996, he would have scored more goals. I don't doubt that, because there would have been more create, chances created. As much as it pains me to talk about Man United in a positive light, I hate it, I can't stand them. But he would have scored more goals and he would have won trophy after trophy after trophy after trophy until it almost got boring to win trophies. But anyone who says that he made a mistake and he, he must have so many regrets, in my opinion, doesn't quite understand football. And this is what's dying in the game now. There are sometimes more important things than paychecks and trophy medals. Sometimes playing for your boyhood club the team that you supported as a kid growing up, idolised your heroes, to then go on to play for them, to wear the number nine shirt for Newcastle and break the records of the people you idolised as a kid. That, that for me, is so much more than winning a trophy and being remembered as someone who won everything in the game. Yes, that's all well and good. And you might be rem remembered much further down the line as a great. But Alan Shearer proved that you don't need to win trophy after trophy after trophy to still be remembered as one of the greatest of all time. Not only is, the, is he the Premier League's all-time scorer, he did what he loved week in, week out for the team that he's adored all of his life. And if more, th more things like that were happening in the game today, I think it would be better rather than people moving for money for... You know, because they've had one bad season with what might be the hometown club and they suddenly start thinking about moving elsewhere. Like, there's a lot of talk about Harry Kane. I know I mentioned him already, about him moving. And I look at it and I go, yes, he wants to win trophies. But he's a Tottenham fan. Is he going to struggle to leave Tottenham in the summer? Of course he might struggle to leave Tottenham because it's a club that's so dear to his heart. And I don't think... I remember the, the rumours that Shearer was going to leave on a couple of occasions. I, I remember Dubai... There was teams in Qatar, I think it was in the early 2000s, showing interest in Shearer, paying him astronomical amounts of money. This is when Qatar was just becoming a powerhouse. But I don't think any of us were ever in doubt he was going to go. Not like Gerrard at Liverpool, when all the Liverpool fans were worried about him leaving for Chelsea. We were never worried about him. 
And yes, it's an absolutely dying shame that he never won anything for us, but he lived his dream week in, week out. Oh, just thinking about him gives me goosebumps. I know that's really cringy, but he is someone who I just idolise. I had the pleasure of meeting him, and I'm not joking, when I met him, I was actually taking a piss along from him in the, in, in the toilets in St. James's Park once, and I was shaking like a shitting dog, and I finally plucked up the courage to speak to him as I walked out of the toilet and asked him what he thought of the first half. It was against Blackburn in the FA a couple, a couple of seasons ago, and I think it sounded something like this. Good game, Alan. It was ridiculous. Um, I don't get starstruck with anyone at all. I've seen footballers here and there. I've seen footballers in the Metro Centre, blah, blah, blah. But I don't often get starstruck. But he is just idolised for me as a kid growing up. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So we've all got our favourite goals of Alan Shearer. I'm going to run through my five favourite from five down to one. A lot of you won't agree these are my special choices for whatever reason. These are just the ones that stick out for me personally. And I'm no, this isn't saying I'm saying this is his best goals. I'm saying it's my favourite Alan Shearer goals before anyone jumps down my neck. So in at number five, for anyone who might remember, we were playing West Brom in the 2002-2003 season. And we were given a free kick because of a back pass about... Seven yards away from the goal. Very, very bizarre circumstances. And we all know how Shearer used to absolutely love Kane and a free kick. He didn't try and curl it. He didn't bend it. He just put his fucking foot through it. And that, quite often put it in either the top corner or the bottom corner. But this one was different. So as we'll see now, Solano stood over the ball. Very, very famous for doing that. He gives it the dummy and you, all you're thinking is pretty much the whole West Brom team is on the line and you're thinking, no way is he going to get it in. There's no way that ball can go through all them players and hit the back of the net. Solano gives it the dummy, some of them run out, then he does it properly. And my God, somehow Shearer absolutely ripples the ball through all the bodies to equalise and we actually go on to win the game 2-1. And again, that for me is still a one that we, me and my dad talk about now, that free kick where Shearer somehow got it through because you don't see that very often and it was just so Alan Shearer forget about curling all that technique precision just put your foot through it son and see what happens and that's what he made famous that's what he made his own coming in at number four a famous night and I won't be the only one who thinks this it has to be I know he scored both but it has to be the second goal at Inter Milan when we drew two all again in the 2 3 season that night in the San Siro, I think there was 15,000 Geordies travelled over for it. Incredible European night. We should have won that day. And Shearer, when that second goal went in, in front of all them Geordies, just the celebration. Cross comes in from Bellamy, who weaves his way through. And there, there's Shearer to tap it in. And it was such a cry and shame we never won that night. But that game just epitomised everything that's great about our football club. The passionate support, the, the Bobby Robson days, the, the, the passion of the manager, even when he spoke. I still, I'm reading his book at the moment, Sir Bobby's book, and it's just incredible. And Shearer, just everything he did that night, the passion in his face when he scored, celebrating for the first goal in front of all them fans that we, we pretty much made the San Siro, St. James's Park. So that one will always stand out for me. In terms of European nights, they don't come much better. Even though we didn't win, than that two old draw at the San Siro, just for the atmosphere alone. Oh, what a season that was. Now, coming in at number three, this one's a bit controversial. Now, a lot of people will see will say Shearer's goal against, um, against Everton was probably his best ever, his volley. For me, for my own personal reasons, it's coming in at number three for me. And you'll see why as we go through. But who can forget... Start of December, the Christmas lights had just been turned on St. James's. We 1-0 down against Everton. Shola Amiobi, who gets a lot of assists for some of my favourite Shearer goals, by the way. It's honourable mention for you, Shola. But that volley, flick down from Amiobi, there is not a, another player on earth who could have caught a ball sweeter than Shearer's right foot against Everton. It just doesn't get boring watching it. You could watch that goal 40 times over. And it never, ever, ever gets boring. There is no sweeter strike of a football than that. If you want to learn about connecting your, ball, your foot to a ball, 
to strike a volley. You just need to watch no further than that. Forget Ronaldo, forget Messi, forget all the greats in the world. That is one of the greatest volleys of all time, and I will stand by that until I'm proven wrong. What a strike, and I know that's Alan Shearer's favourite ever goal. No surprises, really. He's never, he was never going to catch one sweeter. So that's my number three, which I know is controversial. Number two, for me, just because there's a lot more factors that make it more satisfying on the eye, and I loved it that day, it's got to be his, his, um, his strike against Chelsea in the 3 4 season. Just everything about it. Ball comes over from Olivier Bernard. He's got so much to do against Desailly, who was regarded as one of the best centre-backs of his generation. And he's all the way over, not even far from the touchline. And he's, you know, probably would have been given as a free kick in the modern game now. But he's backing in, he's backing in. Des Desailly's right on his backside. And he shuffles and shuffles, holds him off, turns, volleys. And the ball just flies like, like a majestic bird. Flies through the air into that top corner. And I'm, I think it was Ambrosio, whoever the fuck that was. The goalkeeper for Chelsea at the time. There's nothing more satisfying than watching it back on the replay. As Ambrosio just watches it like, what the fuck? Is that a bird? Is that a plane? And it flies in the top corner. And that is only better for me than the Shearer versus Everton goal. Because of just all the little factors that contributed to that goal. And it, it, it was the match winner, which made it even better that day as well against a resurgent Chelsea who'd just been taken over by Roman Abramovich. But just watch it again and again, the way the ball just angles, flies through the air. Desai's been made to look like a Sunday League defender and he's one of the, he was one of the best in the world. And it just flies in and the goalkeeper just... It's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So that pips Shearer's volley against Everton for me, which I know is very, very controversial. And Shearer probably wouldn't agree with that. But that's just my personal opinion. Now, coming in at number one for so many different reasons has to be Alan Shearer breaking the Milburn goal scoring record against Portsmouth at St James's against in what was quite a big game at the time. Um, we were a little bit ropey that season. We needed them three points that day. And again, Amiobi with the assist. So there's two Amiobi assists for two of the goals that I absolutely adore. So again, honourable mention for Shola. Little back heel from Shola. Shira runs through. And it's not his most glamorous goal. I think he sort of almost toe punts it in the end and it goes under Dean Kiley. Um, but it's everything surrounding that goal. The atmosphere when he runs off to celebrate. I was there with my dad, and my dad somehow doesn't remember it. He doesn't. It doesn't stand out for him, and we argue about this all the time. But the hairs stood up on my neck that day, and I don't think they ever came back down. Just Shira, Shira. For God, it must have been twelve to fifteen minutes straight. The atmosphere was so loud; it was deafening. You could have heard it in Newcastle in Australia. Never mind Newcastle upon Tyne. It was that loud coming from the stadium. And we all knew that he'd finally done it. And we were witnessing, I think what was amazing for me to be in the stadium that day was I knew I was witnessing history. That Milburn record had been broken. And obviously Shearer was, I think there was a stoppage just after the goal had gone in. And there was a bit of time where Shearer could just soak up this atmosphere of the noise. And it was just Shearer, Shearer, over and over from 52,000 of us screaming his name. And it was all a blur. It was all a blur, but that for me is one of my most favourite moments in St James's Park in my lifetime. And I hope I see something similar again in my life. But in terms of goal scoring records being broken, I don't think I will. And I am so, so blessed that I was there to witness that. Wow, it was just incredible. So that has to be my number one. Um, not his best strike by any means, and Shearer wouldn't wouldn't would probably say the same. It was a it was a Tommy Toe punch. But it didn't matter. That ball in the back of the net was all that mattered. Whoa, just thinking about it now, that's incredible. So, yes, yeah, so that's my top five Shearer goals. No one deserves to be a Hall of Fame member for the Premier League than that man. Absolute walking god, if ever there was. The word legend these days is brandished around way too much. Goat, goat, goat. It's all you hear on social media. There is ever a man that was worthy of the title of legend, it is Alan Shearer. Played for his hometown club, never wanted to go anywhere else, did what he loved every week despite all the neutrals telling him he should move on for trophies and he lived 
every day, goal after goal after goal. And my God, did he make us Newcastle fans happy. So please, Newcastle fans, drop in the comments. Let me know your favourite Shearer goal, your thoughts on him, whether you got to see him play, anything about the Hall of Fame inductee this week. And as always, Newcastle fans, if you'd like to subscribe to Black and White Bandit and like this video, that'll be fantastic. Get us on Facebook and Instagram. I've done a Shearer compilation video on there as well. And I'll catch up with you for a match preview for the weekend later in the week. Thank you very much for watching. Shearer! Shearer! Shearer!